The word for salvation is the same word for healing. A soter is a savior, but also a healer. Soteria, salvation, is also healing. And Jesus heals us. He is the great physician. The scripture tells us in another passage, in Mark chapter 2, and it's the parallel passage, so it's slightly different. And it says in Mark 2, 17, I came not to call, they that are holding not a physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Which, in Mark 2, 17, so that shows us the equivalence between being sick and being unrighteous. We are sick. Everybody has to deal with the sniffles on, the, on some level, or some folks, they have a cancer. Some folks are terminal, and um, aniotos is a Greek word, it's incurable. That's why when you talk to some people that are what the Bible calls heretics, you're not allowed to speak with them after three times because it says that they're self-willed, condemned of themselves. They're just not going to receive the medicine. Orthodoxy does not preach Calvinism that God will force you to be saved. It can't be because it's a relationship with truth, which requires love. That's why Jesus said, if you want to come after me, take up your cross, take up your cross, deny yourself, and follow me. Because a relationship requires love. And right now we are sick with the wrong love. We love the world. Jesus, Jesus said through his apostle John, he said, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away and the lust thereof. But he that does the will of God abides or remains forever. Our sickness is that we love this world more than the one who created the world. It's kind of like a child that gets a Christmas gift and they only care about the gifts that the parents have, but they don't really care about the parent. The gift is never good enough. They're like, well, how come I didn't get the bigger, how come I got the nine and not the ten? So we have this sickness, this sickness of self-love and love of pleasure rather than being lovers of God. The Greek word is we need to be philotheos, like you have a philanthropy, right, is a lover of man. Philotheos is a lover of God. But we are uh, philidonos, we are lovers of pleasure, hedonists. And God slowly breaks us of that. So my challenge to you today is, where is your affection? We need to check ourselves and see ourselves. Do we really understand that we need the physician? That we are in love with the wrong things? For And, and we can tell that by, do we want to do the things Jesus says? If we don't, well, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. The keeping of the commandments is the proof of our love. Your conscience will tell you. The Holy Spirit will speak through your conscience. And then you're going to start, God's going to start healing you. The healing process starts this way. We have this gnawing emptiness within ourselves. We're like, oh, I'm empty. What, what is this? And then we're like, and then the Holy Spirit will speak to you and say, well, like I mentioned last week, the cup's full. And you'll be like, get rid of this in the cup. And then you wash that out, and that part of the cup is clean. And then you're like, you're still empty. And you're like, oh, what is this? And the Holy Spirit will bring to mind another transgression. You're like, does this ever end? But then eventually what happens is that cup is cleaned out. And... God fills the cup and you experience the grace of God in a way that you just know he's real. You can't deny it. It's, it's as 
evident as drinking the wine, the wine of his love. You can't deny it. But until you taste and see that the Lord is good, you're like, nothing's going to fill this cup. It's emptiness. Why am I doing this? This is a waste of time. But if you cry out and you clean the cup, eventually God fills it because he can't fill a filthy vessel. A mirror cannot reflect something unless it's clean. That's what we call metania, repentance, the changing of our spiritual ability to look at God. We're looking at God. Blessed are the kathari, the pure in heart, for they shall see God. So that's the process of what we call catharsis, per, uh, purification. Now, St. Paul tells us in his letter to the Corinthians, he says, uh, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, a promise to become the sons and daughters of God, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves, katharisomen, katharisometha, let us cleanse ourselves, purification, let us cleanse ourselves from what? All filthiness of the flesh, the body, and the spirit, the mind. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. And when we do that, we experience the aravona tu pnevmatos agiu. The down payment, the pledge, the earnest of the inheritance. We experience the grace of the Holy Spirit. And until we've come to that point of purification and pass through that, it's an empty promise. We haven't experienced it. We need to lay hold on the promise. So I tie this all together say Jesus is a great physician. He wants to heal us. The beginning of the process is that self-examination where he shows us things that are in the cup that need to be washed out. And then eventually, once that catharsis has happened and the noose is cleansed, our, our spiritual faculty is cleansed, then we see him. So I encourage you today, ask the Holy Spirit, ask God, say, God, what is it in my life that you want me to? To be healed from. And he will show you. Now David. Uh, experienced this. King David was. The writer of the book of Psalms. And God's favored servant. But he sinned grievously against God. He committed adultery. And he killed his general. So if you're struggling with a sin right now. If you haven't killed your general. Your boss. Your drill sergeant you're still doing pretty good compared to some others, right? God gives us extreme examples to let us know that there's hope for anybody. The greatest apostle in the Bible, Paul, was a murderer, killing Christians everywhere he went. We haven't done that. But God can, by his grace, save the most wretched person. He can save me as well. And my sins are just as grievous, but he can go and do that. That's the point. So... David had committed those sins, and he cries, and I encourage you to read this, it's 2 Samuel chapter 12. 2 Samuel chapter 12, the prophet Nathan comes to David, and he, he gives him a parable, and David says, I have sinned against the Lord, and then Nathan says, the Lord has also forgiven you, and has put away your sin." David suffered the consequences of his sin for the rest of his life. But God forgave him and restored his justification. And he writes about this in Psalm 51. He says, Against you, you only have I sinned, and on that which was evil in your sight, that you might be justified in your sayings and might overcome when you are judged. Behold, I was born in iniquities, and in sins did my mother conceive me. Behold, you are a lover of truth and desire truth in the hidden parts. In the hidden parts shall you make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Purge me and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which you have broken may rejoice. David lost the Holy Spirit. He lost his justification because of his breaking of God's commandment. And he cries out and asks God for forgiveness and God forgave him. He says, I will acknowledge... Now, read Psalm 32 when you get a chance. Psalm 32 tells us about this. And David writes about it. He wrote two songs because of his transgression. Psalm 51 and Psalm 32, depending on the numbering of your Bible. And he says in Psalm 32, he says, 
I kept quiet. I denied my sin. I kept quiet and my bones within me were rotting. In other words, he was sick inside. He just eaten all up, felt bad. And then he said, I will confess my sin. I will acknowledge my transgression before the Lord and you, and you, Aphikas, you forgave, you remitted my sins. He was forgiven, re-justified when he honestly came to God and said, God purge me. I don't want this. I sinned. I've messed up. And God forgave him. That hope is for every one of us. Every single one of us. God says, cleanse the cup. And he'll fill it. That promises to everybody. Because Jesus is the physician who enlightens us all and wants us all to be healed. May we continue to be healed by our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and experience the health, the grace that he gives. Amen.